Good day, everyone. My name is Yue Gao from University of Surrey. It's my great pleasure to serve as one of the keynote speaker for WSS and to share some of our recent research work on beamforming and channel checking for space air ground integrated network. First, I would like to thank the UK Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council for funding my research through the EPRC Fellowship Project. I would also like to pay tribute to my collaborators, Professor Simon Shen, Professor Wen Gerong, and Professor Xu Yin Zhang, and my PhD students, Jia Dongyu, Xiaolan Liu, and Hao Ran Qi, for their contribution to this research work. In this presentation, I will firstly introduce space information networks. Then I will present our recent work on learning to predict mobility of users in millimeter networks. Furthermore, I will also present our work on 3D channel checking for UAV satellite communications. Finally, I will discuss some open challenges in this research area. Space information networks, also terms as space air ground integrated network, it has drawn dramatic attention for its advantages such as seamless wide area connections, high throughput and strong resilience for 5G and beyond communications. There are mainly three segments, space segment with satellite network, an air segment with aerial network, and ground segment with terrestrial network. Moreover, compared to traditional ground or satellite networks, UAV or HARPS aid communication as a key part of space information network can be applied not only in the scenario that ground infrastructure cannot be accessed but also for emergency communications in crowded or disaster areas. Besides, with UAV deployed in the middle of ground and space communications, shorter line of sight links provide a significant performance improvement over long distance satellite link only. With the development of millimeter wave technologies, millimeter wave links based on advanced beamforming techniques can potentially support air to air and air to ground connections. The diverse potential of different segments poses the characteristics of potentially high bandwidth, global coverage, heterogeneity, and flexibility. For instance, Wide bands at high frequency carrier. Spectral sharing may be explored in 3D networks, relying on various terrestrial frequencies as well as air to air, air to ground, and a variety of satellite frequency bands. Wideband service coverage. The variety of satellites covers a wideband area of Earth and the area platforms, including harps and laps, and so on and so forth. Superheterogeneity of multi-layer networks. The superheterogeneity of 3D networks includes heterogeneity of architectures, service requirements, base stations, and handsets, those terminals. And mobility and flexibility in 3D networks is also another important aspect. The convenience of harps and laps provides a substantial grade of flexibility for communications. For mobile and satellite communications, to mitigate the problem of the spectral crowding, 5G NRFR2 and satellite K band in minimal wave offer additional frequency choices with higher throughput. Although millimeter wave is much more weather dependent due to the path loss, an antenna array with a large number of antenna elements provides higher transmission gain, which compensates the propagation loss. 
In early multi-beam satellite systems, beamforming techniques are simpler versions of well-known terrestrial mammal techniques. However, since a large number of users per beam is targeted in future 5G and 6G communications, applying beamforming through the whole user set will bring significant inter-user interference and performance degradation. To make sure multiple users are connected to the space information network with minimal interference, multiple access techniques play a critical role. Similar to traditional multiple access, in a space information network, multiple access techniques should adopt to communication network dynamics and provide reliable series for different user and the limit of transmission power and spectral resources. Cooperative transmission has the potential to enable multiple platforms to serve users flexibly and robustly. Where cooperative communications, the QoS of users with per channel condition can be improved without consuming too much additional resources. The cooperative transmission has different approaches, such as distributed satellite clusters, satellite constellation, satellite across different orbit planes, and integrated satellite terrestrial networks, or non-terrestrial network, NTN, in the 3GPP term. Millimillarive communications are good at supporting short-range applications with high data rate traffic, such as virtual reality, mobile games, and indoor entertainment. However, they are prone to suffer from high path and penetration loss. Therefore, directional communication with line-of-sight communication channels based on beamforming is necessary, particularly for after long-range millimillarive communications. The specific characteristics of millimillarive communications result in a complex channel environment. Beam tracking methods with the ability to maintain robust communication links are imperative research topics in mobile millimillarive communications. Some users are fixed trajectories that are easily obtained like cars, trains, and satellites running in 2D or known orbital plane, as figure on the left shows. However, some users, like human or UAVs, move randomly in 3D directions. They are likely to move in any direction. Therefore, it's hard to predict their trajectories. Hence, this will bring about a new era of research on user trajectory-based beam tracking method for mobile millimillarive networks. An appropriate beamforming scheme to focus on the transmitted and or received signals in a desired direction to overcome the unfavorable path loss is one of the key enablers for mobile communications at millimillary frequency bands. The small wavelength of millimillary frequency facilitate the use of a large number of antenna elements in a compact form factor to synthesize highly directional beams corresponding to large array gains. The figure on the right-hand side of the slice is a hybrid beamforming architecture applied at both the transmitter and receiver. In this architecture, the narrow beams formed with analog beamforming phase shifters, for example, compensate for the large path loss, and digital beamforming provides the necessary flexibility to perform advanced multi antenna techniques such as multi beam MIMO. Although beamforming techniques can improve spectral efficiency and spatial reuse, it requires good knowledge of channel information to design an effective beamformer, in other words, effective channel estimation. 
As mentioned, channel estimation is very important for beamforming. This slide shows a conventional OFDM-based minimum wave MIMO link employing K subcarriers to send N data streams. Using a transmitter with N antennas and a receiver with N antennas. The system is based on a hybrid MIMO architecture. As shown in the block diagram, the frequency domain clustered channel model is a ge geometry channel model with clusters and rays, channel gain, a ray response vector. FRF is the analog precoder and FBB is the digital one. Similarly, the receiver applies analog and digital precoders too. As fewer scattering clusters in millimeter wave channels, comprehensive sensing-based algorithms are proposed to estimate the vectorized sparse channel in the frequency domain as reported in literature 1, 2, 3. Therefore, in this presentation, I will discuss firstly the beam tracking and then the channel tracking. So let's look at the beam tracking part one, learning to predict the mobility of users in minimum wave networks. We take a different approach to tracking a user's moving direction during the moving process in the base station beam coverage area. The prediction is carried out by machine learning algorithms. This could get prior prediction of user mobility and leave enough time to change its beam direction. The figure shows the beam tracking in a minimum wave network and the mobility model of a moving user. We assume that the base station beam and the user beam is aligned at time slot t and assume the beam misalignment happens at time slot t plus n. Here the time horizon during the moving process is discretized into n time slots. At each time slot, the base station receives the millimeter wave signal transmitted from the user and records the millimeter wave signal parameters including constellation map, EVM, and spectrum information. For simplicity, we assume that the base station and users have line of sight communication link. The base station is stationary while the user is moving in a two-dimensional plane in forcible directions, east, west, north, and south. And the user beam direction remains unchanged while moving. Because of the direction of the user moving randomly, so in traditional way, this is very hard to catch or to align the beam. So this is why we're carrying out the machine learning algorithm try to predict the user direction. This slide shows the experiment environment and minimum level system. We design an experiment to collect raw minimum wave signal data from our National Instruments minimum wave transceiver system at 28 GHz with 5G uh, Verizon protocol stack. It is an uplink scenario, so the RX is considered as the base station, while the TX is the regarded the user. And the BS is stationary, located at uh, origin 0, 0. Well, the user is assumed to move in four possible directions. So it's a trajectory included in a grid map. We discretize the distance from the beam alignment point of view to the first beam mis misalignment point from any direction into n intervals corresponding to n time slots. Then we draw a grid map such that we can easily collect the transmitted millimeter wave signal at each location, as the figure in the middle shows. 
We start with data collection. The initial distance between the transmitter and the receiver is set up based on the antenna gain at both sides as shown in the table on the slide. But in our designed experiment, the antenna gain is fixed so that we can adjust the transmit power to make sure we can observe obvious changes of the constellation map at the transmitter and the EVM vulnerability in short indoor movement range. At each time slot, the base station receives the millimeter wave signals transmitted from the user and records the millimeter wave signal parameters, including constellation map, EVM, and spectral information. After pre-processing the raw data, defining the feature vector, we label the moving direction of each data line considering every two adjacent locations as a pair. Then we train the deep neural network model. A two-layer fully connected neural network with 7x4 and 4x4 neurons in each layer. And the TAR and softmax functions are used as activation function in each layer. The diagram is shown on the slides. After setting up the DNN model, five experiments are performed to test the land DNN. They are south to north, south to west, north to east, and east to west, and all directions. Prediction with the test dataset. Left figure shows that the prediction accuracy increases with the increasing training time epochs. Only considering two specific direction prediction experiments, the prediction accuracy in the south-north prediction is the highest one, up to 80%, while the east-to-west prediction has the worst prediction accuracy. This is because both transmitter beam and the receiver beam are aligned in the east west direction. The red figure illustrates the prediction accuracy heat map in the experiment area with two experiments, north to south and east to west prediction. From figure A, the prediction accuracy decreases gradually from the left corner to the right corner. In figure B, shows the prediction accuracy decreases from top to bottom. This is because the size of the beam overlap area is reduced with the user moving, and the less overlap area is the worse quality the receiver millimeter signal have. To further improve the accuracy, we do need more channel information. Therefore, we start working on channel estimation and channel checking. So in this part, we'll start present 3D channel checking for UAV satellite communications. As mentioned earlier, with UAVs deployed in the middle of ground space communications, shorter line of sight links provide a significant performance improvement over the long distance links. However, in practice, it's non-travel to obtain the real-time channel information due to the orbiting of the satellite and 3D UAV random trajectories, which impose a formidable challenge on modeling and tracking the dynamic channel. In order to have better channel tracking performance, it is necessary to jointly consider both spatial correlation and tempo correlation of the dynamic channel. The detail will be introduced in the following slides. Due to the Doppler effect caused by the mobility of users in highly mobile applications, such as the UAV, high-speed trains, autonomous vehicles, the mineral channel is changing rapidly. 
because of the existence of the obstacles and the shadowing effect can cause significant fluctuation of the path loss. Hence, it is a key challenge to check dynamic channel information. Small wavelengths of minimal frequencies enable a large number of antenna elements, and the massive number of antennas helps focus energy, which brings significant improvements in throughput and efficiency. More importantly, beamforming can realize by generalizing the directional beam. In practice, fast changing channel requires 3D channel tracking. These slides present a system model. We are considering narrowband channel model with OFDM transmission through a UAV satellite communication downlink. We assume the LEO satellite is equipped with Uniform Planar Array UPA, with M antenna elements, as shown in the diagram on the slide. The received signal at the UAV can be expressed as YRX, and the HT donates the frequency domain channel matrix with one arrow as path, where alpha t is a complex channel game, and A, theta t, and phi t represents the transmit array response vectors. The channel is treated as sparse, and the channel model can be written as a virtual model, and then processed by compressive sensing techniques. Where GT is a sparse matrix with one non-zero elements, which means only one dominant path. The dynamic angular domain channel GT can be modeled as a probabilistic signal model with two hidden random processes, hidden support vector BT and hidden value vector theta T. Here BT represents the joint hidden support vector at time T which indicates the channel sparsity with BTM. The hidden value vector theta t represents the temporal correlation of channel coefficients. Then a probabilistic channel model with channel prior distribution can be formed, as shown on the slide. The top left figure shows the hidden support matrix with only one dominant path. The bottom left figure shows the factor graph of the joint hidden support vector B, which consists of azimuth and elevation support. The example here shows the relationship between azimuth and elevation factor position. The joint hidden support vector B130 is the combination of A14 and E16 with M equals to 4 minus 1 times 8 plus 6 with a total number antenna elements equals to 8. Because of the random 3D UAV trajectory together with a fixed orbital plane of LEO satellites, the relative displacement of the UAV and LEO satellite is a consecutive change. This means for a time varying case, the azimuth and elevation angles would only change to adjacent degree in the angular domain with certain probabilities. In other words, the spatial sparsity pattern will act highly related to the prior adjacent pattern, that is A at times T plus 1 and Nx has higher probability depends on the adjacent A T and Nx minus 1 in the previous slot. The right figure shows this relationship based on a 2D Markov model of the azimuth support. The model can be expressed with transition probability as shown K11 and K1NX, and so on. Finally, the joint conditional prior of channel support probability is given here. 
the illustration of the factor graph and the hidden value vector theta t and the Gaussian Markov model is shown here. Due to the path gains change smoothly over time, the hidden value vector can be formulated as a Gaussian Markov process. When beta equal to zero, then theta t m equals to theta t minus one m, which indicates that theta t remain unchanged over time. When beta equal to one, then theta t m equals to beta omega t m plus mu, which means that the hidden value vector shows the Gaussian distributed IID with mean equals to mu over time. If beta between 0 and 1, the condition probability can be written as this equation. Lastly, the joint probability of hidden value vector can be written as here. Given the received signals of time t period as yt, the purpose is to check the dynamic channel vector gt at time t, so the channel vector can be estimated as gtm that equals to expectation of gtm in condition of yt. And the expectation is over marginal posterior p g y. The factor graph of the total 3D 2D MM distribution is shown on this slide. This factor graph contains two subgraphs, the joint hidden support BT on the left hand side of the figure and the hidden value support theta T on the right hand side through time T. The structure of the total hidden support BT can be further extended as a 3D 2D MM factor graph, which contains both azimuth support vector AT and elevation support vector ET through time T. Aiming to calculate the approximate posterior distributions, the sum product message passing rule is used which carefully follows the message passing structure as shown on the slide's right-hand side. For channel checking, temporal correlation can be utilized for better recovery with prior information provided. Therefore, we're also con considering the message passing through time. Here is our numerical results. The complexity is compared in the left-hand diagram. The sparse Bayesian learning SPL takes longer computational time, especially for larger antenna elements. This is caused by the required higher computational complexity of the multiplication and inversion of the matrix. Compared with the SPL, the simulation time of both proposed algorithm and differential orthogonal matching pursuit, DOMP, drops dramatically. With the number of antenna increase, the proposed algorithm still shows comparable computational time. To evaluate the recovery performance of the algorithms, we refer the performance matrix, which is called the time average normalized mean square error, TNMSE. The value of the TNMSE shows a downward trend with the total number of time increasing for all the methods. The reason is that the accumulated prior signal collected from the total period of time can provide additional information for accurate channel checking. For different sizes of the antenna array, the performance metric trend maintains the same. It is easy to be noticed that the performance of the proposed algorithm is obviously improved in comparison with the benchmark algorithm SPL and DOMP. We further compare the TNMSE performance versus SNR 
when the total number of antenna array elements is 64 and 256, respectively. It can be observed that under the different numbers of antennas, the proposed algorithms achieve sufficient performance gain over the benchmark algorithms, SBL and DOMP. This proves the advantage of effectively exploring the detail, dynamic azimuth, and elevation spatial sparsity structure of the channel in the proposed algorithm. At the same time, due to this strength, the size of the antenna has a rare influence on the proposed algorithm compared with the other two algorithms. The impact of pilot number is further compared on the right-hand side. It is obvious that although both SBL and DOMP have better recovery performance with the pilot number increase, the proposed algorithm always remains the superior performance scheme. Moreover, different from the other two algorithms, the proposed algorithm shows a near horizontal performance with the increased pilot size. This demonstrates that the proposed algorithm can achieve a solid performance with a smaller size of the pilot overhead. The reason is that conventionally, increasing pilot number can improve the recovery performance based on multiple estimations through time. While our proposed algorithm can efficiently achieve good accuracy by exploring the dynamic channel structure. To reduce the training overhead, comprehensive sensing-based techniques such as orthogonal matching pursuit, OMP, comprehensive sampling matching pursuit, COSAMP, have been widely studied to estimate the approximate sparse wireless channel in different domains. To further considering the sparse structure of the specific scenarios, some studies explored the more detailed sparse structure of the channel through spatial and temporal correlations in 2D space. In our work, we developed statistical dynamic 3D on-grid channel models for space-air communication links with 3D navigation single UAV and multiple UAVs, as well as LEO satellites. This model considers the joint spatial and temporal correlations in single and multiple user cases in a more practical 3D domain. When we proposed the novel approximate message parsing algorithms based on this statistic model, which can recursively check the dynamic channel. However, there are still a lot of challenges need to be solved. Finally, let's talk about the open challenges in this research area. Due to the special characteristics of millimeter channels, the research topic of checking user mobility poses significant challenges, but also bring some research opportunities for us. For example, the high mobility of the millimeter of users means it is very quick to move from the beam aligned point to the beam misaligned point, which makes it very hard to predict the moving direction before the beam misalignment. And the base station has to support multiple users in different directions simultaneously with high data rate by using is multiple beams, so each beam may serve more than one user in its coverage area. But if one user moves away while others are stationary, how to align the beam raises a significant problem. The other issue could be the user has to hand over among different uh, millimeter base stations in mobile millimeter networks. To achieve seamless communication, multi-base station may have to cooperate to track user mobility. Another issue could be to considering all possible directions in a more accurate mathematical model would be required. 
the longer and more accurate training with the machine learning algorithms could be an advantage. 3D channel checking is a relatively new research topic. There are a number of things we haven't been explored and have not been answered. So for example, for real life scenario, each satellite should transmit signal to various UAVs. Therefore, it's necessary to extend our UAV satellite model into multiple user scenarios. Another possible challenge is that study the difference between the on-grid and off-grid of the azimuth and elevation of the angle of departure in the model. As in our previous work, we only assume the azimuth and elevation directions are on-grid. However, in real world, off-grid is more realistic condition, so this should be further explored. Also, we could uh, looking at study and employ the machine learning and deep learning algorithms to further improve accuracy of the recovery algorithm, which prediction and parameter definitions. So these are all open challenges should be further explored. The other research interests, as an increasing number of satellites continue to orbit around the Earth, Developing a vast ground stations network has appeared as a critical theme so that the ground station can receive the satellite transmit data and therefore space ground spectrum allocation is also an important topic for developing efficient mobile satellite communication terminals and ground stations. The other areas such as mobility management, handover, routing mechanism, are also very important to satisfy the QS requirements of users in mobile communications, especially in the space information network, where various moving satellites and aircrafts are deployed. Minor research efforts have focused on mobility management, traffic offloading, routing algorithms in the integrated networks. Overall, there are still large number of challenges ahead of us. So hopefully my talk can provide some basic fundamentals for you to carry on. We are currently running a Subnequist Spectrum Sensing and Learning Challenge globally. This is sponsored by National Instrument and EPRC. The challenge is that the participants will be required to sense the spectrum from the given datasets as accurately as possible with relatively lower sampling rate at smaller computational cost. We will provide open source MATLAB and LabVIEW codes and datasets. The first price is $10,000. US The second price is $5,000. US dollars. The third price is 3,000 US dollars. The submission deadline is 10th September 2021. Anyone can submit their algorithms in form of MATLAB and LabVIEW codes. The submitted LabVIEW codes will be tested on our memory platform with real signals. The participants will be judged based on the approach, ingenuity, sensing performance, sampling cost, and computational costs. You can register and submit online where the link at the bottom of this slide. Thank you for your time and attention. Please feel free to contact me or my co-authors and collaborators for further information.